I uh, I worked at Amazon. <clears throat> I worked in the warehouse. And How then I Amazon? Destroyed... <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he did. <laughs> I, okay, so I worked at in Amazon as a part of the warehouse. And then I got promoted to become a researcher for Amazon. And so what happens was there's a course about 14 weeks. I got trained in 14 jobs. And so all the corrupt things that Amazon has done and continues to do those were the things that I was starkly aware of. And mm -hmm. the reason why I found out about this is because originally they were gonna prep me for a management job, um, but that didn't pan out because I, I quit. And there's a lot of things about Amazon. Everybody knows Amazon's terrible. Like that's already a thing, everybody's like, cool. But people don't know the exact specific things that they do. So for example, there's this process they go through where anything that's slightly damaged, not damaged in the sense of like, hey, I have a box of cookies and the box is open or bends. No, more like I have a box of six cookies that are tied together and the plastic breaks. And so they're not connected anymore. However, they could sell each one of those boxes individually. Mm -hmm. It takes about 15 seconds to recode the, the, the barcode on it. They already sell cookie boxes individually. But instead of taking the 15 seconds literally to just recode. And so it's like not one big product. And instead it's being sold as a bunch of little products. Uh, they would throw it into a donation pile. Yeah. However, they wouldn't actually donate the cookies. They would use it as a tax write-off and deduct that cost, and then they would burn it at the end of the day. They wouldn't even donate. So when it's like Amazon donated all, donated all these things. No, they didn't. On top of that, they have a negative, I believe it's a negative 1.8% federal tax rate, which means they get more money at the end of the year. So I think it was like $200 million they got back. And so these are the types of things that they would do. They would also tell That's all of us. horrible. Yeah, they would tell us Amazon yeah. doesn't promote injured people. That was another one. And so mm -hmm. what they would do is they, you know, I was a lot younger at the time, a few years back. Um, I wasn't as star starkly aware of how predatory they were. And so I damaged both of my feet and I followed everything that they wanted me to do in terms of like how to properly like move and lift packages and all this other stuff. Busted both feet. And they had me go to their specialized doctor who had proven that my feet were not in fact mm -hmm. injured, but rather I had a birth defect in both feet, which by the way, I had that independently investigated by three different doctors um, after I got health insurance for a different job. So and their they, doctor told you it was a birth defect yeah, because yeah. they didn't want to be liable. Yeah, for it. and yeah. the other doctors, That's the other disgusting. three were like, what are you talking about, dude? Yeah. You, your foot's injured, you don't have a birth defect. And not on top of that, but Amazon said they would cover the doctor, the charges to the doctor's office. And mm -hmm. then they ended up not covering. And after they found out they weren't li they weren't liable for it. And then they pressured me not to report it. And so uh, what I also found out because I was a researcher mm -hmm. was that they would put little asterisks on people's names and their applications. So if you applied for a different job, yeah. there'd always be an asterisk on that application. And so people could look into the notes like, uh, individual is injured. The only reason why I found out about that was because I got promoted to a researcher, so I had a higher level of clearance. Well, they forgot to they forgot to take off my ability to be able to see my own application. And the only reason why I saw, I wasn't even snooping for my own application. I literally was applying for a job and you could see like a pool of applicants who applied and I saw my name there and I saw an asterisk and I was like, why is there an asterisk there? And it yeah. said that I was injured. And the idea was that if you, you label it somebody's injured, they're going to be more motivated not to promote you to a different job. And so originally I was going to take over their media team in Seattle, but I decided to not do that instead. And so I started working as a, a consultant instead. And I also worked in some, um, I worked in some public schools as well mm -hmm. to get into education. So it's like academics and media together, but yeah, Amazon is, is, is the death, you know, they would, I, I don't mean to rant too much. I guess the last thing I will say about this is that yeah. they used to, to increase retention rates because nobody wanted to stay there. One thing they would do is they would they would sign up as a part of a program with the US government that says, hey, look at that. We're going to take people across the world and give them a job and so they can come to the US with a work visa. Yay, that's so great. Look at Amazon. Oh my God. So they would take people from Somalia and uh, Siberia, Russia, and some places like that. But what they actually meant to do was they actually meant to take these people and the working conditions were so bad, they knew that those people would have to suck it up and deal with it. Otherwise, they're getting deported to these these countries that were they're wow, yeah. heavily impoverished. 
And so I would see these people from, say, Somalia have like literal panic attacks mm -hmm. while they're working. And they're literally like clutching their head. And one guy was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. But where do I have to go? I don't have any, you know, I, I don't have any uh, formal education. Do these here. people come to this country like with a, a visa, like by themselves or with a family? Some of them have families. Yeah. Okay. Some of them have families that were able to go with them, but they can't leave. And so Amazon's little dirty trick to try to get them to stay. And they could do things to increase work expectation mm -hmm. or work, uh, excuse me, work morale, yeah. things like that. Like, for example, longer bathroom breaks. It takes seven minutes at the facility in Portland. It takes seven minutes to walk across the factory to go to the bathroom and seven minutes back. So if you have a 15 minute break, that means you're going to spend half of it walking there. You have a minute to go and then you have to spend the other half. And you can use like the bathroom like during your shift. Like, You'll get f that's uh, no, not allowed. No. no. And yeah. they make it clear to you guys. It, it's uh, not allowed? Yeah. What they do, do a little passive aggressive way. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, well, you could. However, the clock is running and your productivity is going low. And if you get under a certain productivity, then you're going to get written up. And if you get written up, I think it was twice. I think, it was, so I think it was stupid. twice in 24 hours. Their grounds for firing. So like injured people, they'd be like, oh, OK, well, you know, I wouldn't recommend reporting it because yeah. Amazon doesn't do that. We don't do injuries. And mind you, like my injury, they could have just given me a chair for two weeks and I would have been good. Uh, but they didn't, so it got they worse. They refused that. You, I remember you uh, requesting a chair because, you know, it was hard for you to stand on your foot. Yeah, and yeah. And they refused to give you a chair. Yeah, and so what they would do is they would, they would move the injured people to mm -hmm. more physically demanding jobs, write them up for low productivity, and then they would uh, fire them essentially. So then the people are fired and also they're injured. That's horrible. Yeah. So uh, again, I don't mean to rant about this, even though I'm totally ranting about it, but um, I used to have to wrap my feet uh, for about 45 minutes before every shift mm -hmm. um, and just like tape and all sorts of stuff to keep my feet together. Cause I had a fused bone and the bone on the side of my foot was sticking out, but I didn't have health insurance. And so you would also put um, some styrofoam. I remember that. Living oh, with you, oh there like was... the memory foam. Yeah. Memory foam. Yep. Had yeah. to design these little memory. I had to design a memory foam pad to like sew together and put on top of the taped up foot. So essentially the tape was to pull my pinky toe away from my foot because it, the bone was sticking out. And, uh, the more the pinky toe pushes in, the more the bone sticks out the bottom, if that makes sense. Yeah, I watched um, Zach do it one day and I was like, what? I was sitting on the, mm -hmm. on the couch yeah, you're sitting watching on the couch, TV yeah. and I just see you like cutting up the styrofoam. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, this is for my shoe. Yeah, this is and the process. Like, dude, like, I mean, that's amazing. Like, I was just like, whoa, like, holy shit, dude. Like, you have to actually, you know, put this much work just so you, you can walk comfortably. Yeah, that was um, that was one of those things to where um, it was so emotionally hard because mm -hmm. I didn't have anybody to go back to and like I didn't really have like a family to fall back on. And so uh, and I didn't have the money to fall back on anything either. So it's like walk on these busted up feet and hope to God for the best or um, you're going to go homeless. Yeah, you know, well, no, nothing else. how are your feet doing now? My feet are doing great yeah. now. Um, there's still a little nerve issue on the side, but I got yeah. double foot surgery, Yeah. Um, which was, you know, it, well, honestly, I hate to say it, but the pain of having those injuries was mm. so bad to where I was in the gym, I think like three days after the surgery, not working legs or anything, but just upper body. Yeah. But it, it honestly, the surgery wasn't nearly as painful as the injury itself, but I have these scars on the sides of the feet to remind me how terrible Jeff Bezos is and how they really could have made working conditions better, but it wasn't uh it wasn't something that they wanted to put the time and attention towards and so they decided not to